So today we have another long reading from the Gospel. Another extended version of this event in our Lord's life where He is encountering somebody. And it's kind of three parts to it. We have the first part where Jesus does the healing. The second part of the controversy about the healing and all the uh, talk back and forth. And then the final part where the man received, who had received the sight meets Jesus again. And so we have these three parts. And each part is rather fascinating, especially the first part. Because Jesus passes by and sees the man who's blind. Important note there. He sees the blind man, right? This blind man was not looking to be healed. It was one of the few miracles Jesus worked where the person was not looking for healing. There was that one guy who was in the synagogue who had a withered hand, and Jesus told him to come up and then healed his withered hand on the Sabbath to show the Pharisees that he was the Lord of the Sabbath. And then there was the widow of Nain who was walking in front of the funeral procession, and her son was dead, and Jesus stops the procession and raises him from the dead. And then we have this man. Jesus is passing him by on his way into the temple. And he stops. He sees him. It's interesting, how many people passed by that blind man and didn't see him? Jesus sees him. It's so beautiful because we think about our own brokenness, we think about our own woundedness, we think about our own blindness. We may not even be able to see God, but God can see us. He sees us. He sees us in our blindness, the blindness of our faith, the blindness of our inability to pierce through the ordinary, to see the extraordinary We're blind, but yet he sees us. So he sees him. And then there's a conversation that the apostles have with Jesus. Jesus stops, they all stop, and they have a conversation. They kind of ask Jesus, you know, whose sin was it? Was it his sins or his parents' sins? And it sounds like a dumb question, like, okay, was it sin that caused blindness? But it's not a dumb question. When you think about one of the first people Jesus healed, after he was healed, Jesus said, Now go and sin no more so something worse doesn't happen to you. And we know from Our Lady of Fatima that war is a punishment from sin. She said that. Both Old and New Testament, we also know that sometimes things like pandemics (laughs) and sins are sometimes are from God to to bring the world to its knees before Him. Or He allows it, He permits it to bring the world to their knees so they can recognize once again that there is one Lord in charge of the universe and we're not it. <laughs> you know, there was that one line from that movie Rudy when Rudy's, the priest says to Rudy, I've learned two things in life. There is a God and I'm not him. <laughs> so sometimes the Lord has to bring us to our knees to remember that there is a God and we need to seek him out. And so sometimes the Lord does allow sickness and suffering. In this particular case, the Lord says, no, it's not because of any sin that this man is blind, it's for the glory of God. It's what he says here is interesting. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. The work of God is going to be made visible through the healing of the blind man. And a little play on words there. Jesus sees the blind man and will heal him so that the works of God can be made visible through the blind man. So we have a lot of conversation about sight right now. And then the Lord does something really interesting. He spits on the ground. And then he takes the mud from his spit and puts it in the guy's eyes. Rather disgusting if you think about it. <laughs> you, know, you think about him doing that like, really? <laughs> you just spit in the guy's face? Really? I kind of like spit it and you smush it in his eyes? Certainly um, nothing you're allowed to do today. You can't even touch your face. Never mind, uh, <laughs> never mind spit on the ground with dirt and shove it in somebody's eyes. Now, some of the spiritual writers have said that this is symbolic of the incarnation. That God became man. The spittle of God represents uh, God becoming man, touching the dirt. And the two together bring healing to us. Christ incarnate brings healing to us. But there's also the connection there to Adam. Adam was made from dirt and clay. And the Lord formed him out of the dirt and clay. And then what happened? We fell into sin. We fell into the darkness of sin. And so the Lord spitting into the dirt, creating clay again, and putting in this man's eyes is also symbolic of the regeneration of the human life, of the resurrection, of the new life we'll receive through Christ Jesus, this restoration of humanity to grace, that our eyes will be opened 
through this new gift of his spirit, of his grace, and when we're washed in the waters of baptism, we'll be given that new life in God. So there's that little spitting and so forth. But then he goes and he washes the guy and then Jesus disappears. Jesus kind of walks away and goes and does his thing. And he comes back and he, he doesn't know where Jesus even is. And everyone's shocked. They're asking, who, you know, he tells the story several times. He tells it to the people. He tells it to the Pharisees. Has to tell it again to the Pharisees. And everyone's like, how did this happen? He's like, I told you how it happened. He spit, put the mud in my eyes. I washed in the pool of Siloam and I can see now. Now it's interesting because when Jesus went to Jacinarat and he drove the demons out of that man, the man wanted to follow Jesus. Jesus said, no, go back and tell everyone what God had done for you. And so the man does. So when Jesus comes back to Jacinarat, everyone's excited. They're laying all the sick in front of him. He's touching them all. They're all being healed. Some are just touching his garment and they're being healed. He does all these wonderful miracles because of the testimony of this formerly possessed man. And last week we had the reading of the woman at the well. And after she encounters Jesus, she goes to the town. She tells everybody what the Lord had said to her. They come to Jesus, they're brought to faith, and they say, we no longer believe because of your word, we believe because we heard ourselves. So you have this woman, who was a sinful woman, who had five husbands, and living with a man, not her husband. And then you have this formerly possessed man, who both went out, evangelized, and brought people to Christ. Now this blind man is in a situation of doing something very similar. He goes to the Pharisees, or they go to him, and he gives testimony to them. Even bring it in the parents. And the parents say, yeah, he was born blind. And the Pharisees just won't believe. Here they have the evidence before him. They're doing all this research, pulling in the guy, pulling in the parents. And yet they still won't come to faith. They remain blind. They won't allow themselves to see with the spiritual eyes to truly see what's before them. The Lord has made visible through the healing of this blind man the incredible power of God, and yet they won't open their eyes to see it. They're blinded by their their pride or whatever it is that's holding them back. Probably their pride, maybe jealousy, maybe envy. Maybe it's because Jesus, you know, wasn't so happy with how the Pharisees were living, and you know, and it took him the task a few times. <laughs> you know, that they put up this wall with him. They can't even see. When somebody was given sight, they can't see the power and working of God in this. And so they're blinded by it, you know? And then in the end, they throw him out. Because he basically gives testimony. He's like to the Pharisees, like, are you kidding me? You don't know if this man's from God or not? And yet, look at me, hello, I can see. How can you not believe that he's from God? How could you not believe that? Have we ever heard of anybody opening the eyes of a blind man before he was born blind? That was me. I can see now. How can you not believe? You know, if he was in New York, he'd say, hey, Stunan. You know, like, what you, <laughs> you know, how hard-headed are you? <laughs> you know? I sometimes wish some of the people in the, in the uh, scriptures were like Italian New Yorkers from Brooklyn. Like, you know, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, what's, what's your problem? <laughs> how can you not see this? You know? But obviously something's wrong there. They can't see what the Lord did. And then there's that beautiful moment here at the end where Jesus finds him, right? In that conversation. And our Lord asks him, do you believe in the Son of Man? Do you believe in the Messiah? He's like, yeah, where is he? And our Lord says, you have seen him. Think of those words. This man has only had his sight for maybe 15 minutes. The first thing 